I am a Kabul tribal member. Um, I'm a descendant of the Wenatchee, Nez Perce, Yakima tribes, and I've been basket weaving for approximately eight, nine years. So I've made, wow, easily a thousand baskets from like this big, and I've made it um, like two or three that are like this round and like this this tall. So I've, I've made quite a few baskets. In 2019, myself and Joe Federson, who is a, a well-known native artist from OMAC, Washington, applied for a grant through the Native Arts and Culture Foundation out of Vancouver, Washington. And we were one of, I think, 15 pairs of mentor and um, apprentice pairs that were picked to get this grant. And we spent a year um, collecting stories. Well, I spent the year collecting stories and making matching baskets and then ultimately publishing a book to hold those baskets and stories that we um, collected throughout that year. Um, we just completed it this last spring and here I am. So today I'll be telling a story out of my book. I'll be reading it. And it's a salmon story that I was told by my grandmother while we were traveling from the Dalles, the Dalles area back to Toppenish, Washington, where I was born and raised. And there's the picture that goes with the story. It's called the salmon story. Back when the animals could still talk and the humans had only been here for a short while, the salmon were in such an abundance that you could walk across the Columbia River on their backs. When humans arrived, the salmon people gave them a few rules they must follow to respect the gifts that salmon gave to the humans. Salmon told the humans that whatever was not used must be returned to the water. For a long time, the humans were really good about returning any unused parts of the salmon back to the water. But after a while, they quit and started taking the salmon for granted. After a little while longer, parts of the salmon could be seen strewn all across the land. The salmon saw this and became disgusted and decided to leave to punish the humans. A human came to the water to get a salmon to eat and was sad when he saw that almost all of them were gone and the water was still. The human began to cry. One of the last salmon heard him crying and felt sorry for the human and said, I will call the other salmon back, but if you forget to respect the salmon gifts, the next time we leave, it will be forever and the salmon came back. So, important parts of my basket, I have to have scissors and different color yarns to represent what it is you're making. Um, I used polished hemp, which you can purchase at art stores or um, on Amazon. And I do what we call a knot bottom, but there are multiple ways to do to start your baskets because there's lots of different weavers and they've all come up with different ways. The, the basket that that's here is, we call it a sally bag and it's traditionally used for gathering roots um, and it's used for storage and they've been around since, since the people have been around um, between I think 14 and 24,000 years. They found them in the area between Quincy and um, Wenatchee in caches inside of the side hills where they dig into the side hill and they found these baskets like this made out of dog bane, Indian hemp, and sweet grass filled with roots and, and things that they dried and were storing for their travels. So I'm pulling out enough yarn to um, start the bottom and usually I take and I cut 10 to 15 arm lengths and then as I go I just add. I'm doing a double folded start. My basket will be double 
because it's easier to do add-ins and for me anyway. Um, so I fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then I found the middle of that second fold. That's this is the start of my basket. And that's so my, doing this is so my yarn doesn't get all tangled up. So again, the start of my basket. And I've taken my polished hemp and I've put one over the top of the other and made sort of a cross. And then I just take and I Take my yarn, wrap around the first set of, they call them warps, and then I twist towards me, and I go to the next group, wrap it around, and I twist towards me, rotate, wrap it around, twist towards me, wrap it around, and twist towards me. And that's the start of a basket. And as you go along, you'll get further and further out. You just keep rotating your, your um, warps, rotating counterclockwise, and the twine going clockwise. So you can see that there's a big sort of knot. Well, as you're going around, you get so far, and then you split those warps. So I have. 32 and 32 that start here, then I divide it in half, 16 and 16, and then I divide it out a little more, um, 8, 8, 4, 4, 2, 2, until you get to the ones. And then these are going around each individual strand of warps. And that's how you get your design. The smaller your, your warps, the more um, um, intricate your design can be. The bigger your warps, like if you used rope or mop head strings or um, any larger warp, you would probably um, have a less intricate design. So it would be easier to do geometric designs with the larger warps. After you um, have achieved muscle memory, 15,000 repetitions, then you can watch TV and crochet or knit or make baskets depending on whether you're just doing stripes or if you're doing a doing a design and then it becomes about counting so between each one of these big foots there's 10 and then three and then three and then so you're just basically counting so one two three one two three four five six one two three one two three and then after a while you can watch tv and count it's it um it becomes a lot easier as you do it more and more. So if you want to get good at something, it always takes practice. I like to tell, when I teach basketry, I like to point out to the new students that, you know, at some point where they're sitting, somebody was probably at one time making a basket sitting where they were. We've been here so long. Um, at minimum 14,000 years is a long time to live in a place, you know, so our people have been surviving and and this is one of those amazing artifacts that's alive and well today.